Hey everyone, it's Job. Welcome to the first edition of Stationary Chats. This is an idea that I was really inspired by Talksmot Tiffany on her YouTube channel where she talks about new things, things that she's been liking, and just general stationary chats. So I thought I would try my hand at it, but be sure to check out Tiffany's channel for the original version. Uh, so we'll start off with something that I acquired recently. This is the new mild liner set called Natural, and oh my goodness these i think there's six colors i think i only have i know there's only five i believe these new five colors are very very nice i really just wanted to buy it because there's this olive green shade and honestly um i think this might be my favorite pack that they've ever done there were two new packs that were released there's another version um, of the kind of milder highlighter colors so they're more pastel but very bright so that wasn't really up my alley so in in terms of just buying what i actually like i only bought this set and they're wonderful i actually labeled uh the swatches um with the word mild because i wanted to show some color dupes so that first gray one is actually an older gray from previous mild liner sets i don't remember which set that might be like the the warm set i don't think so actually maybe the pop one and then um this new beige color um is beautiful it reminds me of the tombow um the tombow markers in those neutral shades so uh this kind of warmer almost yellowish beige is nice and then i think this pink is a nice soft pink um it's a little bit more muted than their other pink that's in other um mild liner sets and obviously the showstopper the green honestly i think the green is the one color that they don't really have in their lineup in that warmer olive shade so i really like it uh, another thing that I acquired recently is this Pilot Eroshizuku ink. This is called Takushi, and holy crap, this is so nice, and I still can't believe that this is being discontinued. So on Tomoe River Paper, so on the right side of the page, you can see it, um, it's a little bit more warm, a little chestnutty, and then on the uh, coloring paper, um, it has a little bit more of a um, green sheen to it which is actually really cool but i think if you have it pool on the tomoe river paper it also has a green sheen but i absolutely love this i bought a 30 ml bottle because this is going to be out of stock soon and it's going to be discontinued so if you like this shade i would really recommend getting it they also introduced the three new shades of um the lineup which are beautiful too and i'm kind of wanting to get a smaller 15 ml bottle set of the new colors just to try out but i think this takushi is super versatile next up i want to share something that i've been loving recently this is also kind of newish but i think i might have talked about it in previous videos or at least alluded to it but i've been really loving these daniel smith watercolors i think i've talked about this before but like the grade of watercolors that you use doesn't really matter like you don't need artist grade watercolors these daniel smith watercolors i still think you know are too good for me like i i'm just painting in my journal um, meanwhile like legit watercolor artists are painting masterpieces with this but i'm trying to let go of that because you know we can enjoy and love um you know finer things in life as well so um i finally splurged and purchased some and i'm also using this gifted art toolkit x travelers company usa pocket palette which i think is so lovely it's this lovely beautiful shade of green it's very bright and cheery and i actually got gifted this because i taught a watercolor uh, class uh, with travelers company usa with their virtual trip uh, travel and sketch series it was really fun and i wanted to show the little like syllabus that i made i was geeking out and kind of uh, used my teacher skills in my kind of crafting, journaling, illustration side of uh, my my world. Um, and it was fun having them collide. It was actually a really fun class. So thank you to anyone who came out and supported the class and to anyone who sent me warm wishes because it went pretty well, um, I think. But there was a little bit of a part where I actually... Um, didn't get to finish uh, my spread, but you know, that's all right. Uh, but I just wanted to show you the 
the colors that I had in my palette. This is what it looks like swatched out. And then you can see examples of what the watercolors look like on the spread. I don't think the paintings on this page are all done with uh, the Daniel Smith watercolors. I think I still use some of my old Cotman um, watercolors because my previous like travel palette was actually a uh, Windsor and Newton Cotman palette and I still recommend that or the Shin Han art aka student grade watercolors that's what I've been using for like seven years up until I bought this palette so I still recommend it and honestly they still get the job done but as you can see I've been really loving painting and illustration in my traveler's notebook like this is one of my favorite spreads as of late and I really want to do more of this I know I love washi tapes and stickers but I end up loving spreads that have a little bit of um me in it a little bit of my drawings and i just wanted to um show you how i've been liking the paints it's been really fun i've been really leaning into this side of my journaling and i've been happy that you know maybe some new watercolors spark this new love but honestly you don't need new watercolors to you know start doodling in your traveler's notebook again but sometimes new supplies are just as inspiring as you know looking at pinterest or instagram or inspiration um, around the world but yeah i've been loving these um and i highly recommend them if you want to try them and then i wanted to show a little bit of a gift um in this video as well so this was sent by a friend on instagram um you probably all know jamel jamel has a incredible instagram page i feel like she's the queen of like enabling or at least the queen of lv she has a lot of uh lv platters and journals and bags but she also has a little small business where she sells her own kind of stationary items or stationary accessories and she so gladly sent this over to me um and these are actually i've never tried these before i've always seen them on other people's journals but these are magnetic like journal charms or magnetic clips that go into your journal and they're kind of just a way to add you know pizzazz and design in your journals i've seen them in a lot of like the planning communities like planner setups i always wonder like how did are they getting this enamel pin on there and it's honestly just magnetic back so i have this finger heart one from jomel and i'm just showing you and demoing how it works you just put the magnet behind you know a flap in your planner and it's usually strong enough to stay where it is, which I love. So this can only work, I guess, inside of your planner, because if this was placed on the outside of your planner, it'll probably get knocked off because it is just using, you know, magnetic force. I mean, these magnets are pretty strong, but um, if you kind of just use your thumb and kind of press pretty firmly, you can still knock um, the, the magnet um, off or like the enamel part off of the magnet backing. So. This looks really cute. There's a hydrangea one. There's two finger hearts. One is, you know, very BTS army aligned um, with the purple. And then there's also like a postcard one. So I really, really think this is such a like thoughtful gift. And I am happy I am part of the magnetic pin crew. Here I am just showing that you can kind of knock them off. But that's, um, I feel like the nature of these pins, right? But yeah, I'm loving these and I feel very included in the magnetic clip club <laughs> i don't think that's a formal thing though um and then this is a new discovery that i wanted to share i have been seeing more people illustrating and doing their line work um, when they do watercolors with fountain pens and i thought about doing this in the past and honestly my first fountain pen ink is actually noodle noodles <laughs> noodlers bulletproof black which is supposedly waterproof since then you know i i've grown to realize that i'm not a noodlers fan and i don't necessarily you know align with the person making them so i haven't really been using my noodlers ink and i think i'm probably going to donate it soon but i wanted to get you know a solid pigment ink so i bought the sailor kiwaguro pigment ink and i am saying this now this one still kind of will budge with water i think i was doing some research if you're looking for a really good pigment ink that doesn't smudge as much i think it'll always smudge with these fountain pen inks but um when i was looking at jet pens i think the sketch inks from rower and clinger are really good and also the platinum version of this so the platinum carbon black is equally good so i think i'm gonna 
keep this bottle because it just works really well in my fountain pen um but i think i am gonna pick up one of those alternatives that i mentioned so i think the roar and clinger i'm butchering the pronunciation of that by the way um sketch inks are really nice and they have multiple colors and i think my friend abby abby c also uses that so i really recommend that over this if you are gonna watercolor because i did multiple tests um with this ink and even like dry tests i think i like even waited a day before like watercoloring it'll still slightly budge and slightly move with the contact of water it won't fully like um wash away so it is still like a waterproof ink but that's just a warning if you're going to get the Kiwaguro. And then I wanted to show you the pen that I'm going to use for inking. This is the new Twisby Diamond 580 in the iris finish. Um, and I got an EF nib because I am using it for inking illustrations. I am not an extra fine kind of guy. I love medium nibs. I love seeing the shading and ink variation. But with this type of thing, when you're illustrating and inking like line work in your doodles and illustrations i want like a finer line um you can see on the screen i have a micron zero one um, to show that that's you know something that i would usually use but i've been loving this and holy crap i already own an iris finish pen i bought the vac 700 um r a few actually maybe it's just been a year maybe a year and a half ago um and i still absolutely love it so now i have like the smaller version of it and you know i've named this this duo papa and 11 just because i think it's so funny um the 11 i i've been you know binging stranger things so you know my diamond 580 is the smaller one so that's 11 um and it's been a really trustworthy writer just like 11 um in in the series okay i'm gonna stop making uh connections <laughs> to stranger things uh but i really love this and it's been doing wonderful, um, wonderfully with the ink, the Sailor Kiwaguro. But again, I think I'm going to switch out that ink for um, a, an ink that is a little bit more budge proof. But I love the Diamond 580 series. Um, here I am showing my original Diamond 580 aluminum. This is still one of like my bigger purchase pens, so it's kind of full circle now that I have you know another one after all these years. So I really recommend these pens, and if you're looking for you know your kind of um, bigger purchase pen, I would always recommend a Diamond 580 because they are like the Twisby Ecos but fancier, and they're a little bit weightier. Okay, this is the last thing I wanted to discuss. So um, this is a fixed issue. So this is actually a really good ending to, it's not really like a problem. It's just like a little bit of a, something that uh, not even irked. It was just like a minor inconvenience, honestly. Um, but I purchased the Rialto Premium from Studio Absent, um, like many others, because I was hyped for the journaling totes. Um, and I've been seeing a lot of it recently. And honestly, this one is the one that caught my eye because look at it, it's stunning. It has these lovely exposed elastics and a leather bottom so you can store your essentials. So I have my kind of like essential things that I use a lot of um, at the front of my tote. And I love this. I really enjoyed it when unboxing it. But when I was starting to put pens in, I realized that the stitching on the elastic was actually loose. And so uh, here I am showing you right now um, it's a little bit blurry, but you can see there that I had to restitch quite a bit of the stitching on this tote. So right here, this tote, uh, this elastic on the tote um, kind of came loose. And so I lost pretty much a segment if I kept um, kept, kept that um, unsewn. So if I didn't sew that, I think that whole thing would have come off. When I received it, it wasn't, you know, fully blown um loose and you know dangling it was just the threads um were loose and unraveling like i think maybe four or five stitches were unraveling um and so i just hand sewed it like i i know how to hand sew so i just sewed it back and it was fine but um a lot of people on instagram actually urged me to to connect with studio absent to see if there's anything that they can do about it and um rita i think is who the is the owner of studio absent um because it was through the studio absent instagram they actually reached out if um they could um 
you know refund my shipping but i actually was quite honest and i said like oh i'd rather have you know a little bit of the tote refunded like the actual cost of the tote just because that's where the issue lies it wasn't with the shipping it wasn't a shipping delay or anything so they gladly gave me like i think 30 percent off um the tote so i got like 13 bucks back uh which is you know better than nothing um and honestly i'm fine with it i was just very uh, disappointed initially so i think it, overall like that interaction has kind of redeemed you know this tote experience because when i got this i was actually so excited but like upon looking at you know the stitching and the quality of of it it's not as luxurious as it looks online so that's just one thing that i want to say even in the pictures that i probably have posted on instagram it might look you know super luxe but um there are some kind of finishing details like the stitching that's a little bit wonky in some places and i mean i i would still recommend it if you're dedicated to the aesthetic maybe purchase um the regular version not the premium version with the leather so it's a little bit cheaper because it is a really expensive tote it's like a 58 usd tote so that's just my warning um i can't i'm not going to formally recommend it because um it it not it didn't even give me grief it was just not the most pleasant unboxing experience so but i'm happy that it's resolved and you know i'm even happier that um folks over at absent studio were kind enough to give me a little refund but here i am showing you something that is equal to the real tote that i thrifted for two bucks this is like a wooden tool kit um i bought it at value village and i wanted to show that you know although the journaling tote craze is very hot right now i feel like it's cooling down um on instagram but there was like a solid like <laughs> month or so that i just kept seeing a lot of tote content but if you are looking for like a cool alternative or even if you're looking for an alternative for like the beautiful classic-y wooden boxes like honestly this this wooden uh, toolbox, open toolbox, is super, super nice. And you can style it however you like. I just have a few things here and like some of the things that I was mentioning in this video. But honestly, even if you kind of sand this down with like a 120 grit sandpaper and use like a, a walnut stain, it's going to look beautiful. Honestly, I prefer like the na light natural wood um look maybe it's all the time that i've spent in muji but i really like that kind of japanese uh, minimalist aesthetic in terms of like home decor and home goods but yeah i really recommend this um and i think that concludes our stationary chat i talked about some new things that i've purchased some new discoveries um, updated you on a few things and also just shared you know a little bit of insight into what i've been liking recently i hope this first stationary chat was useful let me know if there's any topics that you'd like me to cover in the next stationary chat because i kind of want to do this you know maybe monthly just because there are a lot of opinions and things that i acquire and things that land in my head from like brands and friends that i do want to talk about that never really make it onto you know these journaling videos so let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in watching and listening to Okay, I think that's it, folks. Please take care and be safe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.